Hello and welcome back to the OpenTK platformer tutorial series. My name is Sil and in this part of the tutorial we're going to be looking into how to make a 2D view class. Essentially what this class is going to do is create and apply a matrix and this matrix is going to define how our geometry is rotated, scaled, and translated and that's essentially all a view does. Now let's get right into it. So we're going to go right click on our project, select add class, and we're going to call this class view. And our view class is going to contain a couple members. However, before that we need to add some using statements. We're going to do using OpenTK, using system.drawing, and then we're going to add our members here. We're going to have a public vector2 position, and this will hold the position of the camera. And this position should correspond to the center of the camera and then we're going to have a public double rotation and this rotation is going to be in radians and the positive values equal clockwise rotation of the camera itself so the world should look like it's getting rotated counterclockwise and we're going to have public double zoom and this value will represent how zoomed in we are so a value of 1 will be no zoom at all, a value of 2 will be 2 times zoom and a value of 0 0.5 will be zoomed out two times. Now we want to make a constructor for our view class, so we're going to do public view, and we're going to want to ask for a start position, as well as the option to input a start zoom and start rotation. I'm going to go ahead and put default values on those inputs, and then we're going to assign our members to those values. So this dot position equals start position. This dot zoom equals start zoom. And this dot rotation equals start rotation. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the update function now. So public void update. However, we won't be using this quite yet. Later on in the tutorial, we will add tweening when we move from different points. And the last function we're going to add is going to be public void apply transform. So first we're going to want to create our matrix 4, so we're going to do matrix 4, and we're going to call it transform, equals matrix 4, and we'll set it to the identity matrix in the matrix 4 class, so matrix 4.identity. And if you don't know matrices at all, the identity matrix basically means that there is no rotation, translation, or scale. If you multiply any matrix by the identity matrix, you'll get the same matrix out. So now we're going to do transform equals matrix 4 dot multiply or mult. We're going to multiply by what it is at the moment. At the moment it's only an identity so it doesn't really matter if we multiply it but we're just going to copy this line for later lines. And we're first going to translate. So we're going to do matrix 4 dot create translation. And it's going to ask us for a vector 3 value. We only want to change the x and y value since we're only working in two dimensions and we're actually going to use the negative values of our position. So for the x value we're going to do negative position dot x, for the y value negative position dot y, and for the z value we're going to translate it by zero. Go ahead and close out those two functions. And then we're going to copy this line, and instead of translation we're going to do matrix 4 dot create rotation along the z axis, and for the angle we're going to do negative rotation, and it's not going to like that double so we're going to cast it as a float here and now we need to do scale so we're going to copy that line again and get rid of this part and we'll do matrix 4 dot create scale and we don't want to scale the z-axis so we are going to put the scale in for the x and y and then a scale of 1 for the z-axis so that the z value stays the same and this is going to be important later on if we do depth stencil buffers because the z-axis actually defines the depth of the geometry so we're going to do scale of zoom for the x value zoom for the y value and 1.0f for the z value and make sure we typecast these as floats now that we have our matrix we're going to want to pass it over to OpenGL and in order to do that we do have to add the using opentk.graphics.opengl and now we can access the GL class so we're going to do gl.multmatrix and we're going to pass it a reference to our transform matrix that's essentially all we're going to do for our view here. Now we need to actually implement it into the game class. So if we go back over to the game.cs, and at the top we're going to add an instance of our view variable. So view, and I'm just going to call lowercase view. And then in our constructor, 
we're going to say view equals new view and for our start position we're going to do vector2.0 for the start zoom we'll just do 1.0 and for the start rotation we'll do 0, 0.0 now in the update frame function we're going to go ahead and add the view.update call and again this doesn't do anything at the moment but it will later and then what we want to do is before our GL begin, we want to call view.applyTransform. Now one thing to know is we haven't actually reset the matrix, so the matrix would actually be getting multiplied every single frame, and it's accumulative since we used gl.multmatrix in the view class. So before our view.applyTransform, so we're going to do gl.loadIdentity, and that automatically resets the matrix currently on the stack. And now with that, we should be good to go. So we're going to go ahead and try and run this here. And you can see we got the same thing that we got before. That's because the view is centered, there's no rotation, and there's no zoom. So if we change one of these three values, let's say we change the zoom to 2.0, and try running it now, you can see that we've zoomed in two times. Or if we change the rotation for, let's say, math helper pi over 4, you can see that we've rotated 45 degrees. And if we want to test moving the camera, we can go to our on update frame function and do say view.position.y plus equals 0.01f. And then if we run this now, you can see that it just moved off screen there. That's it for this tutorial, and I hope to see you in the next one.